Hello everybody and welcome to the Silly Season Roundup for the NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode for Season Number 4. It is the 2023 season and here we have the introduction of the next gen race car with the 22 2022 mod in the game and let's start off really quickly let's get into it we got aj omanir driving the number 42 car for richard petty motorsports he moves over from the 44 car to the 42 aj omanir is in a contract year so he needs to impress here or else he could be out of the ride at the end of the season eric Almarola is in a one contract year deal and Eric Almarola has just moved from the 37 car at JTG Jority, who has now uh, sold off that charter. They will no longer field the 37. And Eric Almarola was out of a seat, and he ends up here at Colleague in the 16 car. Christopher Bell has gotten off to a very rough start in his Joe Gibbs racing career with only one win in his first few seasons there and he is still yet to make the playoff. However, he did get that first win at Kansas during the playoffs, so he didn't make it. He's currently in need for a breakout year. Can the 20 car find his way to the playoffs and to victory lane multiple times this year? Ryan Blaney is going to be driving the number 12 for Penske Racing once again, but he could, however, be kicked out at the end of the season if he continues to struggle. He has had two terrible seasons, missing the playoffs two years in a row. He's currently riding an 87 race winless streak. The 2023 champion in real life could be out of a ride in the 2023 year of our career mode series. Ryan Blaney needs to step it up here at Penske or else he could be out of a ride. And speaking of stepping it up as well, Alex Bowman has done nothing but struggle since moving to the 48 car. Alex Bowman has not won a single race in the last three years, and he did miss the playoffs in, I think, two of the seasons as well. He needs to start this year off well, or else he could be replaced, because he is also in a contract year. Now, for a driver that has impressed so far, Chase Briscoe, after starting his first season in 2021 as a rookie, he went into his next season in 2022 as a race winner at Sonoma and is coming off a strong round of eight performance. Chase Briscoe should be a driver to look out for here in the Stuart Haas Racing Stable to make another deep playoff run. Busher is in a contract year. He is needs to step up as well. He's had a rough few years, finished outside the top 20 in points last season, so he needs to step it up with a playoff birth or else he could see himself out of a ride he hasn't won in over 200 starts in this timeline his only race win is in that rain shortened pocono race harrison burton will be back here in the red bull racing 26 toyota and after major struggles in his 2022 rookie season he's looking to turn that around here in his second season with some rumored upgrades to red bull racing he should aim to contend for playoffs kyle bush is the next driver we're going to talk about and he has joined from joe gibbs racing to rcr in a shock move to go be the star driver at this rcr racing team and let's uh let's be honest here it is a lot of unknown going into this season for kyle bush he just came off a few wins and a championship for appearance last season so this move was just kind of out of the blue He's kicked Ty Dillon out of the eight car. However, with this newfound investment into the team, Bush has high confidence that he will win races and contend in the playoffs for this number eight team. William Byron, the only driver of Hendrick Motorsports who has been able to make some noise in the past few seasons. He is rebounded off a winless season in 2021 and in the last year in 2022 he won two races and he made a round of 12 run and if he had made it to the round of eight he won the race at texas that would have sent him to the championship four william byron is definitely going to be one to watch out for in this next gen era ross chastain was just terrible at chip ganassi racing in his first season there and since chip ganassi racing has sold off their team the charter has gone to track house racing austin sindrick did make the playoffs last season uh with a win 
and he is looking to get another win and maybe even make a deep playoff run this year. Austin Cindric has gotten two wins so far in his two seasons and he's looking to continue with success. Cole Custer has been a guy that has also won two races in the past two years. However, he was eliminated in the round of 16 on both occasions. He's looking to improve this year as he's been the only Stuart Haas driver to not get past the round of 16 last season. Driving for the 55 car at the Sony Toyota Racing Team sponsored by their flagship product playstation it is matt benedetto once again who had a not a very good season last year he finished top 20 in the point standings however he failed to find victory lane and make the playoffs he's looking for a rebound season and to find that form he had in 2021 where he won at martinsville austin dillon is back here in the number three car he had a terrible season last year and he's looking to rebound and make the playoffs once again and find that form he had in 2020 and 2021 where he Saw himself win Michigan two years in a row. Austin Dillon now with that investment in RCR looking to move back into the playoff contention. And speaking of Austin Dillon, here is his brother Ty Dillon driving the number 29 car for Richard Childress Racing. They picked up a third charter. The Gorbos Racing has left the sport. They did not continue going into the next gen era. But Ty Dillon will be in this 29 car. He did win a race last season. So he should be a driver to look at for to try and make the playoffs again. Of course, that first career win coming at Dover. Chase Elliott is looking to rebound after missing the playoffs in 2022 and going winless he has had a lot more pressure piled onto him as he's not found that form that his father had during his racing career and chase elliott of course champion in the 2020 season of real life well the 2020 season champion was martin Truex jr so in this timeline elliott's still looking for that first championship can he rebound in the season of 2023 and in the next gen era and the first rookie we will get into this year is Ty Gibbs replacing Kyle Busch after Kyle Busch made that controversial move to RCR. Ty Gibbs has been brought up into that team. Of course, grandson of Joe Gibbs. Ty Gibbs will field the 54 car and he is looking to make some noise and some headlines. The 2022 Xfinity Series champion trying to go out here and impress in his first season. The other rookie we'll get into straight away is is Noah Gragson who will replace Justin Allgaier in the JRM number 88 he's bringing that sponsorship of Bass Pro Shops with him from the Xfinity series and all guy will then return to the JRM Xfinity series team so look out for Noah Gragson to compete with Ty Gibbs in the rookie of the year battle Justin Haley has left colleague racing after winning the 2020 Daytona 500 in the 16 car he is now moved to Rick Ware racing and Rick Ware racing has returned to the sport after a season or two out i can't remember if it was two i think it was two seasons and rick Rowe racing have decided to join here with the next gen era the equalizer in the field they're trying to make some gains and they've brought a young driver with a lot of potential justin haley Denny Hamlin will field the number 11 FedEx Toyota once again, and he's still looking for that maiden title win despite being the winningest driver in the career mode so far. Hamlin has picked up 13 wins in the last three seasons that we have done, and he won four races last season, yet still failed to make the championship four. He's been a threat every year so far. Can he be a threat once again in that 11 car? And Kevin Harvey is the 2021 in 2022 reigning champion harvick is looking to go for a three peat here he's decided to stay at stuart haas racing and not retire as he's looking for a three peat and if he is unable to win the championship then he's gonna go ahead and retire i think that's a pretty good ultimatum he has left out here on the table but definitely stuart haas racing will have to line up a driver to replace him at the end of the season if he is unable to do so Daniel Hamrick has moved from Gaunt Burroughs Racing, who have fallen out of the sport, to the number 31 Colleague Racing Car. Colleague have decided to buy another charter and take a chance on Daniel Hamrick here. They've bought the charter from the Double Zero, uh, which was Starcom Racing, who have now left the sport. Hamrick is looking to impress here as he had a pretty bad season at Gaunt Burroughs Racing. However, Colleague believe in him and Eric Omarola to bring that team 
into playoff contention. And the final rookie that we have in this season is Riley Herbst, and he's making his debut season in Rick Ware Racing. Of course, with the new equalizer next gen and buying a second charter, Rick Ware Racing are gonna need some funds, and Riley Herbst brings a lot of sponsorship with him, and he's been pretty good so far in the Xfinity series. Riley Herbst has been taking a chance on here for Rick Ware Racing. He will field that second car and that number 15. Timmy Hill is back here again for the Wood Brothers Racing team. He won Richmond last year during the playoffs, so he's going to look to take that momentum into this season and get a win earlier on so he can make the playoffs this time. Eric Jones is back here in the number 43. Of course, he replaced AJ Smith in 2022 as driver of the 43, and he won Richmond last season as well, the earlier Richmond race that allowed Eric Jones to make the playoffs. However, unfortunately, he exited in the round of 16, so he's looking to improve on that tally this season with multiple wins. Brad Kozlowski making that move from Penske Racing to go be a full-time part owner at Roush Fenway Kozlowski Racing now building that new and improved font I'd say with the chrome numbers looking very sharp indeed and he's looking to bring back sharp performances to the racing side as well of course uh, last season, Roush Fenroy Racing, all three drivers finished outside the top 20 in points. Brad Kozlowski looking to take that leadership role and turn it into a flagship carrier team once again that can win championships. He won two races last season. He's looking to take that momentum into this new team. And his teammate and the final driver of the Roush Fenway Kozlowski team, James Knight, who had his rookie season campaign last year. It did pretty good. He finished top 25 in points. That's all you can really argue for the young Aussie driver, another road course ringer as well. James Knight is looking to now contend for playoffs and a top half points finish, or maybe even sneak his way into the playoffs. Corey LaJoy is back here for the Spire number 17. And let's be honest, Corey LaJoy has impressed so far. They had a pretty poor season last year, but they won a race in 2021, the Coke 0400. Corey LaJoy looking to get his second win of his career and make the playoffs this time. Kyle Larson. Now, this is a driver that has had a lackluster career ever since coming back. He's had only one win since joining Hendrick Motorsport, and he really needs a breakout year or else he could get the boot. Like we said earlier, all the Hendrick guys have struggled so far except William Byron. Can the next gen see an improvement for the most popular team in NASCAR? Joey Logano will be back here in the number 22, and despite going winless pretty much the whole year, he made it to the round of eight. And if he had made it to the championship four, he would have won the championship because he won at Phoenix. He's the most recent winner in the career mode. Joey Logano now looking to get multiple race wins back in on his career seasons that he's used to getting and to make that championship four and contend for a title once again. Michael McDowell will be back here for the number 34. He won his first career race at Talladega in 2021 during the playoffs, so he hasn't made the playoffs yet. So he's looking to do that this year with the new next gen car front row motorsports expect to be doing a bit better now with an alliance with Penske to further boost their performances. Ryan Newman who has been absolutely fantastic in 2021 where he won two races including the Daytona 500 has moved back to Penske after 14 years because he has been replaced by Brad Keselowski at RFK at the end of last season seeing him having a terrible 2022 finished outside the top 20 in points. Newman has joined back with his old team Penske in that fourth car driving the number 33 is in a one-year deal so is looking to impress or else he could probably be retiring pretty soon. Uh, Ryan Priest has left the double zero and joined the 38 car kicking out Anthony Alfredo who has had a lackluster couple of seasons so he is on a one-year deal looking to impress and try to do well in the points. Ryan Priest will be driving the 38 car. And since joining Chip Ganassi last season, Tyler Reddick had a terrible year. So did Chip Ganassi, and that led to them leaving the sport at the end of the season. Tyler Reddick was left as a free agent. However, 2311 came to the rescue, buying a second charter and getting that 45 car for Tyler Reddick to sit in with the sponsorship of Monster Energy. Tyler Reddick was pretty darn good during his first year in 2020 and he did win a race at Martinsville in the fall so Tyler Reddick looking to add on some more career wins. AJ Smith 
the guy, the man, the myth, the legend, who lost to Harvick by one position in the championship for last year is looking for redemption after getting eight wins last season, an absolute menace to society. We unfortunately did not get the championship, so we are looking to come back even stronger this season, bringing back the Dare Ice Coffee paint scheme. We got another extra sponsor here in JYP Entertainment. Of course, Spotify, DreamWorks, and Burger King are back on the car and will look to make some more custom paint schemes going throughout the year. This one is definitely interesting that I've whipped up, but I think it looks pretty good even though it's an amalgamation of pure garbage. And speaking of garbage, it is our former rival Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now, since we are doing the 2022 mod, there is no continuation of rivalries or anything. So Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is no longer our rival. Thank God we don't have to worry about him anymore. But since that, uh, 47 has been terrible the last few years, and so has the 37. They've decided to sell off one of those charters and focus solely on Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and this Kroger sponsorship. JTG is trying to continue to push for playoffs and be a team that can win races. Daniel Suarez, the other driver here at Trackhouse, has won three races in three years. He won with Gaunt Bros in the 96, uh, I believe it was the early Talladega race in 2020. He then won at Richmond in 2021, and I can't remember where he won last season. I believe it might have been Charlotte. Suarez won a race pretty much every year so far. He's made the round of 12 last season he's now looking for a deep player from with multiple race wins on the year daniel suarez should be a driver to look out for martin trix jr was the other driver that was set to retire at the end of the 2022 season over with the new next gen and kyle bush leaving joe gibbs racing trix has decided to stay at least one more year and not to lose two stars at least for Joe Gibbs Racing. So Trex has penciled in his name on the contract once again. Of course, won the 2020 championship. And in real life, he won the 2017 championship. So he's a two-time champion. And Martin Trex Jr. looking to add a third championship to his resume. And the final driver we're going to talk about today is Bubba Wallace, who got his second career win last year at Talladega during the playoffs. So he did not make them. But it was a good way to end the season on a terrible year. Bubba Wallace got his first win in 2021 at Kansas. So he's got a little bit of momentum going now behind him. And now with the second car and a bit of competition at 2311, he's now looking to push for a playoff appearance. And so that is going to do it, everybody, for your silly season roundup for season four. The 2023 season is shaping up to be an interesting one, as we'll have several drivers in contract years that need to impress. We're going to see a lot of movement going on throughout the rest of the season that is going to be coming ahead. But I'm super excited to be back and super excited to bring you a brilliant season four. I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe to keep up with the series. And I'll see you all at the Daytona 500.